So welcome everyone to All for One, One for All. Uh, I'm Jerry Penny and tonight we've got Sandra Capino back who's uh, been one of our guests previously uh, where we, we kind of, um, we talked about your sort of past history and, you know, what you're going to do in your career, your next stage, your career and everything like that. So last night you were, last week, sorry, you were challenged by uh, David, who was who was speaking last week, uh, to to talk again, and and you said, well, it hasn't really gone to plan what I wanted to do, and so we said, we'll just talk about that. So um, tonight is all about how Sandra quit her job and it didn't go to plan. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. yeah. Mm. So welcome back. What are you gonna, <laughs> what are you gonna what are you gonna share with us tonight? Um, so when, when David um, offered me up the challenge, I thought, well, what can I contribute um, to this? And then I, then I thought about it and felt that there may be some relatability for other people that may be feeling the same way as me. And so to give you the, you know, seven inch version of, um, of where I've been, I've been um, worked on my life for organisations and uh, my last job, I quit in December and um, felt that I, had, I was quite uh, burnt out and highly strung out and decided that it wasn't serving me to be continuously dreading going into work every day. And so I took, um, I put my big girl's pants on and decided that I had to think for me first. So the whole idea was that I would quit my job, start a, a business and you know, off I go. Prior to quitting my job, I had done a coaching course and that sort of sort of made me a little bit, um, a bit more excited about what the possibilities could be. So I sort of planted the seed then. And so um, December comes and goes and then 2020 starts and, you know, I'm all gung-ho and then something sort of shifted in me and I felt that dread come back in me. And I felt that I wasn't being true. And so tonight, I just want to share my journey since January um, and where I'm, I don't know where I'm going to land and that's okay for me at the moment. So I really do want to set um, an intention around my, me being present with you guys tonight. And it's about you getting to know me a little bit better, mm -hmm. but hopefully something about... Um, resonates with, with you out there and um, maybe you can take a few little bits that I've said and um, reflect on reflect on that. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to have a very supportive family, both my husband um, and my extended family, my sisters, my brothers and my parents mm -hmm. and also my in-laws are very supportive of me and I've also got a beautiful group of friends that have always been around for me. But in this journey, I've actually found people along the way that organically have just come to the surface, either through like a, a Facebook group or, or something, or someone will tag me into a group. And so I've really been open to all opportunities. And I think that's the key for me, is that I can just be open and I choose so I have that, that control around how I want things to happen. What I'm very aware of still, and I am a work in, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress, is that I still have those limiting uh, self-beliefs of myself. It's been ingrained and no one put them there. I put them there, but mm -hmm. for all my life. So it's around um, feelings of not being worth, worthy, not good enough, not smart enough, um, feelings of guilt, feelings of shame and resentment. Um, always um, feeling that I'm always a step behind everybody else, never quite, oh, how did they get there? What's so special about them that they got to be and I'm still here? So there's always a bit of an imbalance and, um, and a bit of um, contradicting to what I thought I was doing to compare to what other people were doing. Yeah. And so that manifested for me in a lot of ways, anger, huge, um, <laughs> impatience, confusion. Yeah loss of energy and motivation, um, feeling sad, feeling hopeless, um, irritated, just this, this, this bubbling of irritation always underneath me. There was indecision, can't make a decision to save myself. Yeah. Fear, a lot of fear, suspicion, couldn't trust anyone. Really? Yeah. 
and the underlying part was that it was around being feeling that I had to be perfect and um, be this certain person. And I call that certain person the celebrity. Yeah. Because I can switch on the celebrity. And I think we all can switch on the celebrity when we want it. When we want it. And I am very aware that I don't need to be a celebrity. I'm enough the way I am. Now, I can say that to you now. And there are days and moments where I actually 100% feel that. But often I don't. And I don't feel, when I speak to women my age or family or friends, um, I, when I say this kind of stuff to them, that they, it's not foreign to them either. Like I think there's some element, there is that, there is that, that self-doubt, those limiting beliefs of yourself that do hold you back um, because it keeps you safe so that you don't take risks and then you don't question anything. And so for most of my life, I've been put with work. I'm, I'm probably an ideal employee. I'm very obedient. I do what I'm told. I'm a perfectionist. I go over and beyond, really, and really take my energy to serve others, which is great in theory and I think it's important, but I wasn't yeah. serving myself. I wasn't, I wasn't, I was just give, 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 giving. And being a nurse, that's what you do. You give, you take care of, you make sure everybody else around you is fine as a mother, as a friend, as anyone. Mm -hmm. You often take care of others before you take care of yourself. And I thought that was just being selfless. And I think there might have been a bit of martyrdom in there as well, but oh, not that I ever asked for any sort of um, approval, but I did feel good when I, when I helped other people, and I still do, and that will never change. Um, but I check in with myself. And so um, I, me of all people, for the people that know me, I um, am a very impatient person and um, want information really quick. And if you're going to use too many words, then I'm not interested. So I didn't actually give people the space that they needed as well. And I would rush and I would try and finish off their sentences. Just, just hurry up and get to the point. Like I'd be going, come on, just, just say something. And I felt myself, I felt that I was doing that to myself as well. Not letting me finish what I wanted to do, what I wanted to start. And I allowed other people and almost invited other people to interrupt me. And didn't give me the opportunity to be creative or be curious or to question. And so I sort of landed in this, in this swamp, if you like, of just, I felt like I was sinking and sinking and sinking. And um, a couple of months ago, I was on a Facebook, uh, on a Facebook challenge uh, for a, you know, another group. And I met, I met a lady there. And she, and then, and then that was it. And I just put it out to the universe to say, here I am, this is what I want to do. And the idea for my business was to train and work with organisations in the aged care and disability sectors to improve team, team cohesion and team engagement so that they were providing support um, to residents and clients and patients and whatever um, in a really um, person-centred way with dignity and um, love and service to that to those people and that was my intent and it sort of all changed that's still maybe something I will do but I feel I need to build the blocks inside of me first that's a that's a really good point and so until I feel it then I can't sell it so um, and I know that the foundations are there but I want to be able to take to be in control of the of the trajectory of the business but first my own trajectory and and try and um, almost draw a line in the sand to say, okay, so I've made past mistakes. I've hurt people in the past. I've done all that, but doesn't have to, I don't have to carry all that with me everywhere I go. I, but it's not part of my identity. I've really made some stupid mistakes. I've hurt a lot of people and the people closest to me. Uh, but I've learned from that. And so I have to let go of that shame. It's almost, it's that Catholic upbringing that you have to, you have, to have your penance and it's lifelong. And you've got to carry it around with you and, um, and let that be a, um, I don't know, like a, a flag that you carry. And here I am, I'm imperfect and I've done this, this and that. And I think that um, it can work to your advantage. If you acknowledge it and say, this is who I am, I am imperfect, then people aren't going to expect and you don't expect perfection of yourself. So you can cut yourself a bit of slack. And I think, oh, gosh, now, am I being too lazy? Am I being too complacent? You know, what do I need to do? And then I just, I just check in with myself. And the things that I do to check in with myself is 
as I was saying, around um, I meditate every day and that's like, oh, you just don't do that. Like, I don't do that, but I do. Yeah. The other day I was walking around the river because I walk, I go for a walk every day and I had um, a meditation in my ears and one of the, well, and I, you know, you get, and you're supposed to be lying down, but of course I don't really, I don't. I do all mine like standing up and walking. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I, like, I, think, I think a lot better when I'm walking and when I'm driving. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I go, here we go. I've got this guy's voice in my ears and he's talking away and, and he's got his American accent on and he's going, why do you need to know? What do you need to know? And I'm going, what the hell do I need to know? What is it I need to know? I'm going, okay, so is it about my business? Da, 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 da. And he goes, no, no, go deeper, go deeper. I said, all right, all right, I'm going deeper, I'm going deeper. And I'm walking along the river, I'm going, I'm getting frustrated. I'm starting to get really frustrated. I'm going, what is it I need to know? What is it I need to know? And just as I was giving up, it just came to me. And it was, I have to forgive myself. Right. Yeah. And so I did. So I started the process. I haven't fully forgiven myself. I mean, I'm 48 years old, so there's a few, few years of forgiveness I've got to I've, I've Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what it was. It's just, just forgive yourself. Yeah. Just let it all go. And so there are days where I'm uh, uh, like purely forgiven. There are some days where I get, I get pulled back into that shame and that guilt and that yeah. you're an idiot. Why did you do that? You shouldn't have done that. And then I just sit with them and I go, okay, thanks for reminding me, but I'm leaving you here. Mm. And so um, now that I have that awareness about myself and, and the reason why I have this awareness and this medit and because of meditation and doing affirmations and journaling, which I do all of that, it's because one of these groups that um, I was in, I met a lady called Roz. And Roz has really helped me. Um, she's a healing coach and she's really helped me um, just settle just be quiet and still yeah. and um, when I'm feeling that I'm starting to race and sprint, she slows me right down or I look at an affirmation. Now, I'm not into this affirmation stuff. I never thought I would be. It's all airy fairy. It's all that, but it's actually not. I remind myself when I'm, when I'm having a, a shitty day mm. or I can see, feel myself getting um, agitated and impatient with the kids or with my husband or just irritated with myself, um, I stop. I actually just stop. And for me, that's really, um, really a new, a new thing for me. Now they don't. I don't think. I don't necessarily think they realise it yet, but I've realised it. Yeah. So I, there is. I want everyone to remember that there is capacity for everyone to to change, to to be quiet and be still, and things come to you. Things absolutely come to you when you're quiet and you listen and you really, really listen. Sometimes that voice is loud and sometimes it's not even on and that's okay. Mm. And so um, I'm beginning to trust myself, use my intuition. I've always, uh, not always ignored my intuition. I've um, always felt that my intuition wasn't good enough and that everybody else knew more that knew, my, knew what I needed. Yeah. Um, and so I, I was scared at one, at one point that it would fail me and it would stop working my intuition. I don't know if you can relate to that, Jerry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And uh, I felt like if I don't use my intuition now, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be like the, bear, uh, the boy that cried wolf. And, and, and when I need it, maybe that's not the right analogy. I felt, mm, what's the analogy? If I kept ignoring it, it would turn its back on me. And so, um, yeah. and I wasn't sure whether it was my intuition or was it fear? I couldn't differentiate. Was it fear telling me don't do it because, you know, you're safe where you are. You don't want to grow anymore. You're okay. You're doing all right. Or was it, no, don't do it because it's not the right thing. Or yes, do it because you need to do it. Like I, I still have conflict between intuition and fear. Yeah, so yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, these two are, are, are always playing together. Not always nicely, but they're always in the same arena, if you like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so those feelings of uncertainty have been in my life, all my life, around that fear or is it intuition or what do I do or um, what should I do? I, I'm always asking and, and trying to get rid of that word should out of my vocab has yeah. been... Uh, really hard because she yeah. always implies wrongness or, or bad or 
um, regret or, yeah. oh, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So now I've raised an awareness around my values and my worth and that I do deserve everything that the universe gives me and everybody deserves that. Yeah. Uh, no one, um, Ross said to me once or when I was doing meditation that if you put everyone um, along the coastline where the oceans are across the whole world, everyone just stood side by side and had a bucket in their hand, there's still going to be enough water for everyone. Mm. Everyone can have a, a chance of what the ocean can offer us. And I always remember that. So I, I do deserve prosperity. I do deserve good health and abundance and love and all of it. Not because of me, because we all do. Mm. Um, no one's better than anybody else. And I always used to have that comparison as well. Oh, wow, look, look, look what they're doing. Oh, gosh. And then I would say, are they doing that out of love? Are they doing that dishonestly? Then I would try and justify their success because, oh, they're just doing it. Oh, they were given that or, you know, you know a, lot of, a lot of crap was going on in it was diarrhea yeah, going on in my head, really. Yeah. So now I'm trying to be more honourable to myself and patient um, and loving and trusting and respecting myself. Um, I live for now. That is it. This is right now. This conversation that we're having is right now. The past is done. The future I don't have any control of. I have hope for the future. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I can plan it. But all I know is right now, I'm only here with you, Jerry, with Luke and whoever yep. else is watching. Yeah. So that's, that's, um, uh, it reduces for me my anxiety around the, un the unknown and yes. um, the fear, absolutely the fear. Um, so the other thing that I've, been, I've started to do, and it's a bit weird, but it's, um, it's using a mirror. Right. One of the exercises I do now, um, I bought this mirror and I had to actually look at myself in the mirror and um, talk to myself and say, I really like you, Sandra. I don't, you know, you're going to say, I really love you, Sandra. I really like you. I'm not at the love point yet. I, I, yeah. like, I like me. I mean, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I try and talk to myself like I would to my best friend, yeah. or to my child, with, with love and compassion. Like, yeah. You're doing all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you done any self self love meditations? Um, I, ha um, I haven't yet. Have you got yeah. any you can suggest? Well, I just um, I have the app. Uh, what's it called? Insight Timer. It's called. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. Got that. yeah, yeah. The gold bowl. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just someone suggested to me to get a self love one. Mm. And um, so I've got a self-love one, an abundance one, a couple of law, law of attraction type ones. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just just play them as often as I can. So like the the self-love goes for about uh, eight minutes. And so that's a good one if you, I, I do it when I'm, um, I've hopped out of the shower. So if I'm not doing hair and makeup, I do the eight minute one. If I'm doing hair and makeup, I do like the 12 minute one. Okay. <laughs> and how long are you doing that for? Oh, ages, ages. So just, you know, again, you're meant to be lying down and sitting still or whatever, but I figure it's not hurting me by playing it in the background no. there. And <laughs> I don't think there needs to be rules. Like I don't yeah. think there needs to be rules. It's, what, it's whatever works. Yeah. And, I and, just and so what are the benefits you've, you've, you've um, sort of found doing that? Um, well, definitely, I've been doing the abundance one a lot longer. Okay. And, um, you know, that's abundance of everything. You know, it's not just, it's not just money. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I certainly, after a few months, I thought, you know what, I think this thing's working or something is because my mindset is changing on a lot of these different things. And, it, and it's one of these ones that's quite visual and it really... Um, her name's Melody Linton, Lytton, Linton, I think, if you want to search for her. Okay. Um, and, she, you know, she makes you sort of separate your head like this yeah. and imagine the, um, the abundance coming in through your open head and then breathing it out. And the, um, the self-love one is like the, a little bit like that too. So you you breathe in and you say, um, oh, what is it? 
I know that when you breathe out, you say, I am, uh, I am worthy, breathe in. I am enough, breathe out. Yeah, That's what yeah. you would say. Yeah. Yeah, I'm enough is huge, isn't it? Like, I'm enough or I matter is a really big yeah. one. Or I accept, I love and accept myself. Yeah. Is, is, but sometimes I go, um, I matter, I matter. I do, I matter, I matter, yeah. I matter. Or sometimes I just, I just say thank you. And so the other day I was going on another walk. I mean, I go and I forget where I am. Like I walked from Essendon to the Flemington Race Course. Like, <laughs> like in Footscray I walked. And yeah. I, was so, I was so fixated on this and I was so mesmerised by it. I could have, I easily could have jumped in the Maribyrnong River and gone for a swim. I wouldn't have felt it. I was just so in the zone. <laughs> and um, he was saying, you know, thank your feet. Thank your feet. I'm thinking, well, I don't thank my feet. Yeah. They've taken me all around the world. They've taken, I've carried two babies with, with my feet. I've, I've lived 48 years with my feet and I don't thank them. You know, just those kind of things on my hands and what I've done with my hands. Like, it's yeah. just, we don't, I don't think we routinely really acknowledge what our bodies do every single day. Yeah. And that we take, you know, every heartbeat, every single heartbeat, like it's amazing. And yeah. Yeah, you know, I can tell you that the body can do it because I've got the, the clinical background. Yeah. But it's still a miracle, really. To be still living on this earth is pretty much, it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> I, used I, to, I used to always say when the kids were really young, going, I kept them alive for another day. I can't I believe it. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. God, I kept them alive. I oh, know. Yeah. That was, my, was, some days, that was my job today to keep the kids yeah. alive. And I, and I keep it done. <laughs> Yeah, we weren't born. We weren't born a rock, so be thankful for that. <laughs> but even my kids asked me the other day, "Go, well, how come puppies can look after themselves during the day and kids can't?" <laughs> like that, because there's a new puppy next door to their grandmother, and she goes over and feeds it lunch and stuff. And I go, "Well, it can't completely look after itself." Yeah. But um, I said they don't. They don't need as much attending to as um, as babies. That's for sure. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I can really relate to you, Jerry. I used to think the same. I don't know about you, Luke. If you're at work or 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 what, but I would just say, "Thank God, they're both still alive." Yeah. Hey. No, yeah. I've been at home with my kids for well, apart from them going back to school the last two weeks, probably about four months. Yep. Straight. <laughs> Literally straight, yeah. Yeah. Right. And now they're back. And now they're back home again on the holidays. No, no, it's like, no. uh, but that's all right. We like we went out today, and I think the rule of thumb is, if it's sunny, then we go out and enjoy the day. Like just yeah. get out and at least do one thing. Um, and then if it's rainy, then it's cool to stay home. So yeah, you can't sort of sweat the small stuff. There's always stuff to be done, but. You know, someone points out to me probably once a year that work will always be there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just because you think it needs to be done, uh, doesn't mean it does. So, yeah. mm. and you know, I'm probably one of those crazy people that's really loved the COVID. I've actually loved that the kids have been home. I've yeah, actually yeah. loved it because this is the only time ever for an extended period that we all get to be together. Yeah. And yeah. It's just, it was, I felt cozy. I felt, I felt. You've probably real. been a lot more present for them as well. If you, yeah. Compared to if you had have been working in your old job from home, I don't know if you could have done that job from home, but yeah. And, and my kids have needed me for a number of reasons to be here mm. without distraction. And so I've been given the opportunity for that to happen. And, um, you know, you may do. You're down to a single wage, but you may do. And, and, and you do, you cope. So, um, yeah, you, don't you know, know, I used to go, oh, my God, I've got to run out of money. Well, you don't. You just adapt. Yeah. And, you know, you have, you have to be um, very flexible and um, what's the word? Is it agile? I think that the word that he uses. Frugal, resourceful. Yeah, all that. All yeah. that. Tight. <laughs> uh, you, have to, you have to count the pennies. I'm, I'm doing that tonight, actually. So, yeah. You, you do, but, you know, we've got to live as well, you know. Yeah. Um, so um, things work out, and I have faith in the universe that they, that, he, that she or he will look after me, and that's that's. And I honestly do believe that. And I never used to think, oh God, that sounds so Oprah. But 
that's how I feel. And I feel, I feel okay. And I get to spend time with my mum and my dad. Yeah. Um, and that's important to me. Very important to me. So, um, and mum's watching. So hi mum. Um, <laughs> hi mum. <laughs> so um, I'm almost done. I had to take a few notes. You're right. Um, so what's, what's next on the cards? Like you, you, you've sort of covered off that you, um, you know, you had these grand plans of starting your own business and then it just, it just never felt right. Yeah. And, it, and, I, and I thought, were oh, you starting I'll, to feel like sick about it? The yeah, thought of I, it? I did, yeah. And I felt already resentful. Yeah. Yeah. I already. I thought, well, I've just got to trust the process. I'll follow what my coach says and I'll just do what she says because she knows better than me. Mm. And I thought, yeah, you've got to feel uncomfortable. You've got to take risks. You've got to be, but you should if you're feeling exhausted and already resentful on a really lack of motivation before you even start. Mm. And so it had nothing to do with my coach. It had everything to do with me. Yeah. And I have learned that. So, look, whether or not I do that work, yes, it's something I've had some people um, approach me in the last couple of weeks that they want to meet up with me. And I'll, I'll do the work. Of course I'll do the work. I feel better about doing it, actually. But I think that there's work around um, women at my age, around this time of their lives, not knowing what to do next. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm still, I'm still not sure. I, I, I think some days I, I have thoughts of what, what, what it might look like, but um, if I thought of every thought and took every thought, I'd never get anywhere. So I, I'm just, I'm just going to sit quietly and see what lands. lands. I'm always sticking nosing around what's going on. Yeah. I'm just going to be still and, and, and land. And um, I, I can be quite adaptable as well, so I don't have a problem with that. But I like that coaching, consulting kind of space. Um, I, I I like that. I like that kind of space still. So there's something definitely there I'd like to do. Yeah. Um, just keep so like, putting yeah. it out there, what you want, and it just it, it will just I wanna, I, I just one to, opportunity will come to you. Something will come to you, and, it, and I have faith that it will. Whether it's working with women my age, whether it's working with organisations. Whether it, whether it is, I, I know I want to serve and I want to make impact on the world. It's not just about making money for me. It never has been about making money. Mm. It's always been about leaving an impact on on this world. Mm. Really, mm. it's been my complete honest self. Yeah. I couldn't get more honest. Yeah. And so even though I've quit my job um, and things didn't go to plan, it's just this is, where I have, this is where I need to be and this is where I want to be. Yeah. And I feel okay. I feel whole. I don't have to be the celebrity. I don't have to be a representative of myself. I can just be me. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. That'll make do. I think sometimes the wheels have to come off. And that's the, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes, um, maybe not in your situation, but you'll never have all the ducks in a row um, yeah. when starting a business. And you hear that all the time with people mm. that say, look, oh, I just sort of fell into it or things suddenly changed and it happened with me i one day just yeah, had no work uh, doing a job that paid quite well um and i sort of did what i did as a hobby and then i just sat in the room the next day and went right oh well <laughs> it's time to make some money and that was uh that was 17 years later so um yeah but you do you're right you, you I mean you've got to you know you've got to have a passion for it i really recommend anyone um, starting a business or even consulting that you do what you enjoy. As you said, you, you want to make an impact in the world. So it's not so much about money because money is only a motivator so far. Like it, can, yeah. it, it motivates you to a point and then, you know, you might have, you know, someone might die in your family. So you'll, you know, you'd be motivated to, to prove them right. And, you know, to, to, you know, push on and work hard, but, I think finding that passion and, uh, as you said, you know, um, just, yeah, it, it, it's going to make it better down the track, definitely. You're going to enjoy yeah. what you do. And, you know, but you also got to be an example to your kids to say, yeah. just don't settle for a job. Just don't settle because yeah. you're getting paid. I was in a very well-paying job. And it's, yeah. uh, you're right, money isn't the only motivator. It's about having integrity and honesty and curiosity and motivation every day and being excited yeah. every day. Most and you'll find that, yeah. Oh, I found that a bit today, actually. Yeah. I'm very creative and I like that. You know, we, we, we do signage, so we're, we're in that creative space and we're doing a project with a sculptor. And this guy studied in um, Italy for 15 years and 
And I'm like, what's a, what's a sculptor do? And this guy like carves rock and he's amazing. Yeah? And I was like, oh, all yeah. of a sudden I was really excited. Like, and he said, oh, I'm going to go up to Cork Ferry and select the two and a half ton rocks for this job. And, um, and yeah, I was like, wow, that's what you're doing. He's like, yeah. And then I get him back to my factory and then I start chiseling away, sculpting. And I was like, wow. Wow. Like, wow, what am I doing? I mean, I don't want to be a sculptor, but it was just great to be involved um, in such a really creative process. Like you just, and if you work too hard and you're just doing it for one reason, you're going to miss those little things yes. that inspire you and you should be doing more of it, right? Yeah, exactly. What makes you feel good. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so that's really a really good point. So I've been challenged to do a 90-day live Facebook post every single day and I started today and I absolutely cracked myself because I just I just wing it. Whatever comes into my head I wing. So I'm committed yeah. to that. And who knows what? Like oh if you if you asked me that last week, I'd say, get nicked, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but like what you say, if you just keep going one one way, you won't see the opportunities that come your way or the opportunities to learn, like about this sculptor yeah. who does this, you would never have known what they do. And now you know stuff hmm. that you didn't know this morning. And so you've got to learn, you've got to keep evolving. And so I'm doing these 90 day lives now. Oh my God. And, and see where that, where that goes. I'm not looking for money. I just want people to, just, it's more for me to do it because I've committed to it, but just to, you be should, all, to people. You, just be you should organize some to be interviews. So you just get someone else to join you in on your Facebook live and interview them. Then it takes a little bit of the pressure off. Yeah, peeps, it could be coming your way. <laughs> you can get me on any time. That's fine. Jerry's a, a professional inter yeah, um, interviewer. Yeah. Just call Welcome. me the Oprah of Zoom. Oh, yeah. The hard hitting questions. So what's yeah. next? It's like, oh, you're, yeah. the, you're the one that has the hard hitting questions, Luke. No. I do the seven shocking secrets. Yeah, um, yeah. Rapid, the... rapid fire questions. He says he's always going to yeah, ask. Yeah, I'll have I'll have some of those shortly. So um, yeah. buckle up. Um, <laughs> what, one thing I was going to say too is that, um, we mentioned before about being the example to our kids, and I think um, in basic principles, I try to teach my kids the difference between working for somebody and having a business. Um, mm. And I say, look, I'm here now with you, but I'm actually making money. So I'm using other people's time to generate income, right? And there's a difference between, you know, someone who works for someone who has to go to somewhere mm -hmm. and work for money. You know, if you don't go to work, you don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, okay. And so I think early on, if you can, you know, expose your kids to that sort of thinking um, and it might not be work. It might be investments or something like that. You know what mm. I mean? It might be something that they can start to see the benefits of money working for them um, and, and utilizing either other people's time in business um, or, uh, or yeah, money um, as opposed to just getting in that cycle of having to go to work and mm. getting paid going, you know what I mean? Yeah. It sort of changes yeah. their, their thinking about yeah, how yeah. to generate income. There's not, there's not only one way. I remember used to, because my office was in New Southern Cross, and in winter, we'd all be like, everyone getting off the train, you can really feel like the weight of the day really on them. <laughs> yeah. And they're all in their black coats, they're all in their black coats with our scarves and our gloves, and it's like, look at us, like a procession of dread and misery. Yep. Going into these these boxes that we call work. Yep. I think, is yeah. this it? Is, is, this, is this it? You're telling me this is it. This can't be it. So, yeah. Is that element as well? Yeah. And, you know, it's not for everyone business. Like that's no, the arena no. we, we play in. Um, and yeah. even me being a business owner, um, it is hard. You know, and I can't <laughs> expect my, my staff to understand some of the stuff I go through. And that's, that's the reality of it, you know. I can't sit there and say, well, oh, I've had a shocking month. And, you know, so therefore I'm being like this or, mm. you know, you really, that, that is the arena we play in and I say that to everybody. So I'll take it on the chin and um, yeah, it's not, it's not for everybody. And sometimes I've thought, gee, I could make a pretty penny just consulting, cruising, good, good money, good car in, in what I know. You know what I mean? But, and I thought it doesn't allow me the flexibility or our family, the flexibility of doing what we do. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Flexibility is a big one with kids. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. It's huge. And that's why you've got to keep remembering that that's 
um, that's why you why you're doing this is well sometimes mm. <laughs> people yeah. are doing this yeah. for their kids and to to keep mm. that um, type of situation that is is good for them so yeah. I suppose you know when you you know you uh, in the airport when you're going to take off and they do the, the demonstration they said the oxygen on yourself first that's what mm. I'm doing I'm putting the oxygen mask on me first and then yeah. everyone else and that's what I'm doing and see yeah. where I land who knows I don't know what my destination is but I'm okay I'm okay yeah I yeah am. yeah is there a, is there a what's next or you just don't know it's just day by day at the moment I, I, I get little hints as I said I get these these these, these shooting thoughts coming past my head I, I i get i guess part of it is still around disability and, and and aged care and health but there's also a space i think for um for parents of of uh predominantly i'll, I'll work in the teenage space i've got an 18 year old and a 14 year old mm. and um working in the space of parents for, for kids in that age group um, so a lot of schools don't talk about um, stuff around resilience. They, they do, but they don't. They do like a lesson and that's it, mm. around resilience and mental health and, and, and knowing when enough's enough and recognising symptoms of anxiety and stuff like that. Mm. A lot of parents aren't equipped with that kind of information. And so they go, they go to the GP, they get a, a referral to a psychologist they hope will be the right match. Or they go to the school council and I hope that the school council will help fix it. But it has to be a collaborative, a collaborative um, team approach around it. And I think um, parents, in, parents are, are scared of, doing, um, of um, stepping the wrong way with their kids around stuff around um, that mental health uh, kind of thing. I've learned a lot in the last few months around this. And so I feel I am able to speak from experience around it that um, there needs to be more, more support for parents around this space because, you know, is it behaviour or is it real mental health? How do I know the difference? What do I do? Who do I go to? I'm a failure as a parent. There's all those things. I, I, I'm, I'm stuffing my, my, my kids up. There's that kind of stuff that you have to um, really face, hang, face um, hang, um, like bang on and it's not pretty sometimes. But there is light, and I want to give people hope that there is light around that, um, mm. around that space. Is that there's just a real gap? Mm. There's, yeah, I feel there's not enough um, services and stuff for teenagers. You know, mm. um, even holiday activities and things like that. I, I, I don't know because I don't have teenagers yet, mm. but I feel like that there would be a big gap in the market for. Um, besides sport, other things for teenagers to, to participate in? I'm sure there is, but... Well, they like to hang out together. Yeah, I know. They like to just be cool and, like, hang out yeah. and go to the shopping centres or hang out at home and, you know, a lot of them are just communicating via the computers anyway. So there's that whole isolation. They don't turn off these kids. They are on all the time. Uh, and that's... And that's like I'll tell you where the gap is and I can see you... I'll drive the bus, but I can see you up the front. Um, it's called a roughing it camp, yeah? So we take kids away for a week. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, we give them a meagre tent and a stick and a few provisions. <laughs> um, there's no phones, there's no technology. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just take them out bush and, and um, let them... Let them forage. I'll let you um, drive the bus and steer the whole thing, actually, because you're not. No, no, no. Oh, no, no you can be on the freight. Yeah, I'll drive. <laughs> I'll drive the bus and encourage the kids and tell them oh, it'll all be okay. I'm um, going to declare them. I have never camped in my life. Really? <laughs> there's, Don't worry. There's, there's other glamping for the adults. There's glamping, but if I'm going to do it, I'm going to camp. There's. Um, I know a friend who sent her son to a place in Queensland, like a like, it was like a military camp. Yeah. And, um, he came back with his head held high and his back bloody straight. And they and there was a series on think ABC or SBS a few years ago around around how they take these um, troubled or challenged kids and make them right. You never know what happens after. Mm. And whilst so, so what I'm saying is there's probably space to talk to the kids, there's also space to talk to the parents and the schools and the communities. There's Headspace and there's all those great organisations, Origin, all those great organisations, but they are inundated. The demand is, is far outweighs the supply there. And so there's a real, um, real mismatch of resources there. And so 
I just I just like to raise people's awareness that it's okay if you don't know what you're doing. But don't don't stay in that unknown. Ask for help and it's okay to ask for help. Yeah. Make sure yeah. you um look up Heather Yelland on um Facebook. Because I, I remembered about her. She ran this thing called Green Camp and now it says it's called the Elevation Company, but I think she's still very involved in teens. So the Facebook name is The Elevation Company and she's Heather Yelland. So um, what Yell and Y-E-L-L-A-N-D. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure she works with teens. There's all this stuff about the parent zone and the person zone and... Um, yeah author of the teen brain she's interviewing. So she really specializes in teens. And I know that she runs this green camp for kids and it, it's kind of one of these. Yeah. I have to check um, it out. Yeah. Not toughen up things, but it's probably more like a resilience camp. Mm. Green super green camp. Dot com dot au. What's it called? Green super camp. Dot com dot au. Um, mm. And yeah anyway so she's worth checking out um yeah they're, they're great um a friend of mine is a friend with her, a friend of her so if you want to connect um sandra with her at all let me know and i can i can get josie to introduce you to her so yeah mm. and that, those camps are great i also want to work in with, in, in schools with them mm. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a psychologist at all mm. at all did your but, did your um, girls ever get the lads from the resilience program in at their schools? I don't know if they just do primary school or if they do high school as well. You know what they get yeah. at, 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 our, at our girls' school is everything about cyber safety. Yeah, that's Talk it. About cyber safety, yeah. you know, that kind of fear about what could happen if you're not careful, which is yeah. important, really important. But not um, enough positive stuff. But not and enough it, about recognizing. Oh, this doesn't feel right. What does that mean? Oh, it's normal for a teenager. Well, is it? Yeah. It's still yeah. I'm sad every single day and I'm crying every single day. Is that yeah. is that normal? Yeah. I won't say anything because you know that's mental health and I don't want people to know that I've got, you know, I'm mental. Mm. 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 And being that, connected all the time is very isolated. They is no good. Whilst they're connected, they're they're very isolated. They're connected, and they're on, but a lot of them are very lonely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but just even plugged in, just plugged in all the time to mm -hmm. To technology, having those boundaries and, um, you know, just yeah, unplugging from that, the world that is technology. It's, it's mm -hmm. great, but um, it's got some real, real things to answer for, you know, like even just getting out and taking your shoes off and walking on the grass. I mean, it's just, it's called earthing, you know, yeah. if you want to feel, you know, and these are all energies and vibrations that the earth produced, you know, that the humans have had a connection with, um, you know, for a long, long time. And, you know, we fail to, we fail to, to, um, see that, especially kids. Like it's really important when they grow up, you know? Um, and that's there. Yeah, I just think they're, they're soft. They're soft. Even my kids, I say you're soft. I said, if something really bad happens, you know, it's going to feel a hell of a lot worse than what it is uh, now. And I think that's the reality of it. You know, there's, there is camps that they do in, uh, not camps, but trips um, that they do in the States. Um, where they'll take a family and uh, there was a story of a mum and a dad and a son turning 15. It was his sort of rite of passage and they're very nice, passive people, very spiritual. And it was actually, a, I think it was four, three days it took. So they all stayed in individual spots and they went with a guide and they dropped off mum first. So they hiked for like three days, oh. dropped mum off. She stays there by herself. And then they walk another three days, drop the son off. And then the dad, <clears throat> and anyway, the dad said, look, son, you need to pack this. You need to pack all of this and be prepared because um, it's going to be, I think it was three days they stayed out there. And it was just time alone by themselves. Mm. And they only had a real, you know, little tent, um, sleeping bag, etc. And the dad said goodbye to his son. He hiked for three days, left the guide. He unpacked his stuff. Um and realised that he had his son's sleeping bag, so he mispacked stuff. So he's like, okay. um, I hope he'll be all right. And then he said it rained sideways for two days solid. Um, and he's like, he couldn't sleep. He's just so worried, like, should I head back for my son? And, um, and he stuck it out. The kid stuck it out. 
yeah, so they came back three days later and, um, yeah, he'd stuck it out and yeah, said it changed his um, whole perspective. And it wasn't survival, like he had food and, and water and stuff, but, yeah, like it, you know, he didn't pack his stuff right and his dad got his sleeping bag and it was, yeah, it was just a bit of a mess. But he said it grew, it grew him, you know what I mean? Like it really, he had to push through for pretty much two and a half days. It was completely bone freezing up you know, it was just cold and wet and um yeah and i think those experiences too to to just connect with nature again um yeah. is something we forget and very very beneficial completely mm. completely if i'm looking at something something will come a bird will fly past or a tree you know i've noticed things now i'm more, I'm more um aware yeah, like, nice. um, yeah so and i I'm not that person. Like, I've never been that person. Rush, rush, yeah. rush, 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 rush. And now I'm just going, okay, let's just take it easy yeah. and see how we go. So, I, look, I am excited. I, I'm really passionate about that area. I love all that. I, I love all that. I think there is a real need there. I'll speak to, um, I'll, I'll connect with you again, um, Jerry, during the week and ask about a bit more about this lady. Yeah. Um, but I think there is, there, is, there is much to be done in this space. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and you just gotta, you just gotta. I mean, I for me, it sounds like when you left your job, you kind of like, yeah, I'll just do a business, but dealing with the same kind of people because it's what I know. Yeah. But now you've realised, you know what, it's not my passion. So you you've just got to start figuring out. I think what what your passion is. Um, yeah. And if, like, if you could choose anything to do. And you didn't have to make money from it, you know, like if you could just do a volunteer type thing or whatever, you didn't charge for your services, what would you choose to do? So besides sitting on the beach in Fiji all year. <laughs> it would be this work. It would be this work. It would be connecting with parents yeah. around this kind of... Yeah. Just giving them... Because they, we all... We all want... We all want we, none of us want to make a mistake with our, with our parent, with our parenting, but we're human and we are going to make a mistake. And I remind my kids, I've never done this before. Yeah. Like, I've never raised a child and I've never raised a teenager, now an adult. Like, yeah. it's freaking hard. And you say, we don't get paid for this shit. I don't get paid for this shit. <laughs> and, um, That's a bit harsh. <laughs> and I, and my own fear was sort of blurring my, my ability to make decisions and stuff. So and I, I feel like that's impacted on, on, on them. My own indecision, my feelings of, oh, shit, I'm stuffing up here. Yeah. Where are they going to end up? But, um, you know, you get all dramatic. But um, no, that's, that doesn't sound dramatic. I'm dramatic. I say I can't parent anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I can't do it. Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I think, I think we all feel it, but it's just, uh, it's, it's a horrible feeling thinking that you're doing it wrong all the time and that you're actually mm. not. And you're doing the best you can and that's enough that you do the best you can with the knowledge that you know. And when you know better, when you know more, you do, you do better. And this mm. is not what Angela did. She says, she says if, you know, if you know better, you do better. And it's just the process yeah. of knowing. Yeah. Uh, then, well, Sandra, I implore you to go and do something to help um, parents okay. of teenagers because... Well, I've got one that's less a uh, one and a half years away from that. And I, we were at my nephew's 14th birthday on the weekend. And I'm just like, I don't want to be a parent of teenagers. <laughs> it's not all that bad. It really isn't. It's just about, yeah. to me, you, you, you're a manager until your kids are teenagers. Then you've got to become the consultant. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't micromanage them. They've got to learn to stand on their own feet, make mistakes. Yeah. You'll always love them and you'll always be there, always be there in their corner. Yeah. That's what it's, it's hard to do because I still ask my 18 year old, what did you have for lunch? Like, I still ask her. I can't help it. It's yeah. The in me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need enough. <laughs> we could be like the animal kingdom and just sort of cut them loose from there, you know? <laughs> several years old i tell tell the kids that story i said you know like the lions and stuff they just leave yeah they might leave their cubs you know at whatever age and and many many sort of animals do that too crocodiles Um, they're lucky if they get two days with mum well she's off yep two days because we we, i did a crocodile tour in darwin last year and they said oh it's really strange that the mum is still there with the eggs they hatched about two days Mm. ago i said very rare to find her still here with them after two days but it's usually one day 
Mm. And um, it's just it's just in their nature. They just they just know what to do. And yeah. obviously, I don't know how if baby crocodiles are a target from um, other birds and everything. They they might be. Don't know, but. Let's get back to us with that next week, Jerry, and let us know. Give us a bit more information about it. Yeah. Baby croc. So when I was up there, I actually made a video, don't treat your customers like uh, crocodiles, basically. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Yeah. Nurture your babies, basically. Yeah. 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 Seven shocking secrets of crocodiles. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. The you baby ones are pretty well. cute. That, you know, it's amazing. They're only like... I know. That's so cute. 20, to, 20 to 30 centimetres, about 20 centimetres long they are. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty cute. Until <laughs> you see their mum. <laughs> yeah, no good. <laughs> <laughs> I was determined to see crocs in the wild though, so I had to do it. Nice one. So, so um, how, how interesting are we to be human right now? Like... You know, mm. it's a great time to be human, I reckon. Even though it's challenging, it's a great time to be human. Great time to be human. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I yeah. wouldn't mind being a half poodle breed at the moment. They're pretty much loved by the whole world. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Everyone's got a half poodle poodle something. I don't yeah. have a half poodle. I have a crazy kelpie cross with something. We don't know. She's a rescue and she's an absolute banana. She's, she's not anyone's cup of tea, but, you know, that's what we got. I think that's reflective of the owners, which oh, they yeah. say, isn't it? Dogs sort of mimic and mirror that behaviour. Yeah, oh. I'm just, yeah, yeah. True, but, Luke. You don't know me well, but I think you know me well enough. Ah, pff, we're all we're all batshit crazy in some way, yeah. shape, or form. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon. it just comes in different that. different forms. Yeah, that's I right. get called weird. You're a weirdo. Yeah, and I'm just like my uncle, and he's just he's weirder than me. Yeah, he's just a funny weird. Yeah, but he's just yeah. like. Oh, Jeez, mm. that's good. It's a good thing. Yeah. You know what's weird is I'm typing in into YouTube the other day looking for B and I videos and up up pops this guy. <laughs> and I'm like, geez, I know that voice, but who's this guy? And then I'm like, it's Luke. <laughs> oh, you didn't recognize me with hair? No, he had hair. <laughs> I did not, I did not recognize him. But um, mm. yeah. There you go. Oh, the good old days, yeah. It was, we had a good, it was, good crew it was, back then. It was the voice. It was the voice that I was like, holy shit, that's Luke. <laughs> Wasn't yeah. expecting to see that young rooster on the screen. Young rooster, not much has changed, but uh, yeah, except for the hair. But yeah, um, yeah. There you go. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Oh, well, Sandra, thank you once again for sharing your, um, your life with us. It's always an interesting, an interesting conversation. Um, another time I'd like some Italian cooking lessons, please, I think. Sure. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah, I thought it was going to be a quick one tonight anyway. Not at all. I thought it would be done by like 20 past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. no. All right. Well, we better, we better let everyone go home then. <laughs> yeah, we better. Thanks for, for joining in and, and I hope you um, got something out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It was Thank good. You. Good. Yeah, and I hope that it's for you as well, Sandra, that it, that it has been uh, part of your forgiveness thing. So um did the, has has the hop on a pono worked helped and, and actually a lot of the stuff the meditation comes from hawaiian sort of um uh, hawaiian tradition right it? so um that that's really good uh, but i just want to plug if anybody wants to follow me on the facebook it's saint's journey as in saint that's my nickname is saint yeah um because sandra's such a long name uh so it's saint's journey and Thanks, you're all welcome to come and um, join and um, have a little sticky nose and see where, where you'll I'll pop up in, in the day. Um, and uh, also acknowledge my very good mentor. Is it a saint's journey? Saints. Uh? What, what did you say, Jerry? A, a saint's journey? No, no? it's just a saint's journey hmm. on Facebook. Like that's your page? Yeah, and there's a little girl. Or is, or is it a person? Is page. it a? Is it? It's a page, not a. Not and there's a, a photo of me as a great prep, and the flowers, roses, pink roses. Not, I'll invite you, Jerry. Yeah, it's not coming. I can't find it. Okay. Saints journey. Huh. Awesome. Let's we'll check it out. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks. All everyone. right. Thanks, Sandra, thanks. and thank you, Luke, for chiming in and chatting You're with welcome. us. Yes. Uh, as always, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Fabulous. See you next week. Bye.